right, let me get started here. Okay. So I guess I'm the only one on this call. No one else has joined in, but that's fine. Oops. Oh, yes, we do have someone coming. All right. Let's get going here. So this assignment, we're going to pick up the same stuff we had uh, for assignment one. And the main focus this time is going to be on pivot tables and a number of other things. Um, but uh, there's just one student, I think, that's on. Yes, Ibukan. Okay, welcome. So the first thing I want to do is to take my data file. I've just opened it, and I've got to create a pivot table. So let's just make sure you get your pivot table right before we go too far. So you just click on any cell in the table. And I go up here to insert. Hello, insert and pivot table. It's going to say it wants to grab table one, which is great. That's what I want. Uh, if it hadn't been in a table, it would have probably picked whatever the dimensions were of this uh, data set here. I'll click OK, and this is what a pivot table is going to look like. Okay, let me get all of it up here. Get back to my questions. So it said that I want quartile in the rows, gender in the column. I want ID in the values box, and I want to do that as a count. So the way we go through this is I want uh, what was it, quartile in the rows, gender in the columns, and where's ID? Pick it, put it into the values box, and I want to change this to just count. And the fastest way is to just click on any number that's in the middle of the table, right click on it, go down, and it summarize the values. That's what I'm doing at the moment. It summarized with sum. I want it to be count. Okay, I've got 1145 values. That's correct. That's what I want. Okay. Now, what does it tell me to do with this? So I put quartile in row, gender in columns, ID in the values. Um, I summarize the values with count, and I want a pivot chart. Okay. So I'm not doing anything fancy to it at all. So I go here and I want to insert a pivot chart. If I'm in Analyze right now, up here on the top in the Pivot Table Tools, I've got Pivot Chart over here. If your screen looked different, you might have had to go to Insert. And in Insert, it also says Pivot Chart. Okay, So look for that uh, icon that says Pivot Chart. Gives you a choice of different types of charts. We just want a standard column chart. Click on it. Get it in here. Now, I'm going to shrink this down a little. Maybe I'm going to make my screen a little bit bigger too. So I hope if you're watching this that uh, you don't do what we saw many people do on assignment one. Don't go and do print screen and take a picture of your whole screen because it, it includes what applications you've got open and all kinds of stuff. I don't want all that. I want your table and I want your chart and that's it, nothing else. So on a Windows machine, I press down the Windows key, the Shift key and the S key. My screen goes dark and a little cross comes up and I can go and snip the stuff I want. I'm just gonna snip this. So I just drag it over, it highlights it. It's now copied to my clipboard. Oops, excuse me, let me get this out of my way. And so if I go over here to um, back to my Word document, I'm just going to go and paste it in. Boom, there it is. And it's just what I want. There's nothing extra. If you give me a whole screenshot, then this portion of it is going to make up a little tiny piece. And I may not be able to read what's in your picture. It was very frustrating trying to mark some of those. 
So with this, I want you to clean it up now. That I'm going to compare males and females. Okay. And I want to do that for each quartile. So I want to compare the first quartile to the second, to the third, to the fourth in terms of the gender split. So I want percentage of row total. I want you to hide the other. And the percentages are going to have a lot of decimals. I want you to get rid of the decimals. Okay. And this is a recurring type of thing you're going to be doing. So click on any cell in the middle. And if you right click, we can show values as percentage of row total. Okay. I don't want other in there. So I go up to column labels and I get rid of other. Okay, that fixed that. Now I don't like all these decimals. So I right click again. I go to number format, get rid of the decimals. All gone. That's what I want. I'm going to go and take a picture of it. So just what I need here. And I will paste it in my assignment. Done. Okay. Now, it asked me to look at change the values to average GPA. So I'm going to have to put GPA in the values box. And I'm going to have to change the summary to average. Let's do that. So this is in values. I want GPA. I don't want ID. And I don't know what this number is. Doesn't look like a GPA to me. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to summarize values by average. <laughs> look at all these digits. I don't want all of them. I want so I can go back to number format. Now what you could do is click on number. It's already going to do it to two decimals. That's what I want. Boom, there I've got it. Take a picture, paste it in. Okay. Zoom. Now, there's a problem with this picture. That the vertical scale on that picture starts at 2.8. It looks like I've got a really sharp de decline from the first quartile to the fourth quartile. The people, the first ones to answer the survey were over here on the left, the last ones to answer the survey over here on the right. Um, but it's being exaggerated because I shouldn't, I should never have a vertical scale that starts part way up. You've chopped off the bottom of the picture really. So what I want you to do is click on that Okay, so I've highlighted the scale, right click on it, go down to format axis, and it says my picture is going to start at 2.8. No, it's not. It's going to start at zero. Okay. And I can hide this stuff up now. So this changes my picture a lot. Okay. Now it's going downhill, but it doesn't look as extreme as it did before. Take a picture of it. Okay, snip this little piece, and I'm going to paste that into my assignment. Okay. Now, we've done all the mechanical things. I'd like you to actually look at it. Okay. What we're particularly concerned about here is with any survey, you get often a very large number of people that don't answer the survey. So we don't know anything about them. And uh, that I can't say anything about them because they didn't answer any of the questions. We don't know um, about their gender. We don't know about their grade point average. We don't know any of the others, but here are just two variables we've looked at. But you can think of the students that answered the survey. There were about 400 that were invited and we had 300 and some that responded. Let's say 320, roughly. That 
the first quartile was the first 80 students that answered the survey, then the next 80 that answered the survey, and then after that next reminder, we had another 80 answer the survey, and then we had the final 80 that answered the survey, and then there was 80 that didn't tell us anything. You might think that the ones that didn't answer at all would follow the pattern that we've got here. So are the ones that answered the survey, do you think they might be different from those that didn't answer? And in what respect? Can you make a prediction? It's, I can't tell you whether or not your prediction is right or wrong because you're gonna be talking about students for whom we have no data, but you might be able to infer from the pattern of early responders and late responders uh, who the missing students are. This is a big problem anytime we're studying data and we've got missing information. Because it's missing, we don't know what it is. But sometimes we might be able to make guesses about is this a serious problem or not a serious problem. In this particular assignment, we've got three quarters of the students answering. That's a lot. That's really high. Um, generally, we're over the moon if we get 30% response even 10% with some types of surveys. With online surveys, expect less than 1% of people responding to it. So it varies. This one here, we got a lot of data on a lot of people. So let's look at them. So I want to go and make a new pivot table or revise this one. And I'm gonna look at the reasons students choose St. Mary's. So what I recommend you do, rename this guy, question one, and go and make yourself a new table. I like to start fresh. So let's go right from the beginning and go to insert and create a new pivot table. Yeah, we're starting from scratch. Okay. And I suggest you do this with each of the questions on the assignment. Maybe you'd even part A, you do one, table and then you create a new one for part B because otherwise if you went back to go and look at your work again everything has been written over by the like even with this one that we just did we've changed our table several times over and we've written on top of it so we can't get back to our first table very easily okay so this one said we are going to look at important reason and I think it's going to go in rows if I remember correctly what else are we doing so, uh, and put oh, important reason to rows and home, we're going to put columns. Okay. So let's find home it's up here somewhere. Put it in columns, just drag it in. Okay. And I want ID in the values, make it account again. We're going to do this quite frequently. ID and right click on it. Summarize values by count. And you got to get in the routine of doing this over and over again. Look how tiny those numbers are. This is going to be a problem. Okay. We've got really small frequencies. But we got 56 students from Africa, 59 from the Caribbean, 56 from China. Those are really small groups and they're really scattered in terms of their answers. This is going to be hard to work with. Okay. I'm going to. Um, uh, we want to look at the different markets that we've got. So let's um, first, we're going to look at each of those markets and variability in the responses. So it says make it percentage of column total. So I'm going to summarize val uh, show values as percentage of column total. And I want to get rid of the decimals. You do remember format, same thing we did on the previous question, but this is not a new task at all. That I'm going to make this really small, give myself some room because I'm going to add in a chart. Yeah. And I'll move my chart over here. Want my computer is slow. No, I don't want to move you around. I want to move this thing around. There we go. And I'll make it a little bigger. 
and I could take a picture of that and paste it in. What a mess. It's going to be hard making sense out of all this stuff. Okay. So take a picture, paste it in here. Same routine as we've done before. This is the real task in question two, is to do grouping. So I want you to do grouping of uh, Nova Scotia and Canada outside Nova Scotia and call it domestic. Group the others, call it international. Collapse all your groups together and tell me what you see, okay? Uh, we're gonna also hide program because it's, you see program is a big, big, big spike and the blanks got a big spike. So we wanna get rid of that stuff because it's in our way. I'm gonna do that right now. Okay. So that's a little bit simpler, but now I'm gonna go when I take outside Nova Scotia, okay, let me take that label. See my cursor is, looks like a cross. So hold down the control key and I'm gonna pick Nova Scotia the same way. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna go down to group and it creates group one, okay. It's gonna be domestic. And we're gonna, uh, whoops, sorry, that's their total. I wanna collapse that group, okay? So, oops, what did I do? I did something wrong. Group one total, I, I want group one, I should be grabbing and call it domestic. Okay and see if that fixes things. Let's collapse it. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna take the other ones. I'm gonna take um, Africa. I'm gonna take Caribbean, China, other, oops, get it in my way. Can't see what I'm doing here. That picture in the way. Hold on. My computer's not responding. I'm not sure what it did. Looks like I've got several copies of my picture here somehow, but it's still, oh. I'm gonna get rid of it, <laughs> just delete it. I'm not sure what's going wrong with me. So I've got too many applications running at once. So grab all of them, including other. Other means some place that's not in Canada. And I've clicked them all. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna hit group. It's gonna create group two, okay? Oh, I missed Africa somehow. Oh, let's do this again. Africa, Caribbean, China, other, South Asia. Now let's see if I get it right. Okay. So. All of them get into group two, I'll collapse it. I'm gonna call it international. And let me get rid of, I've got for some reason a whole bunch of these charts here. So let me bring this up here. So this one's a lot simpler, okay? So, I'm comparing international to domestic, and I can see, you know, costs and location seem to be big items with a number of people, reputation as well, with a number not to the same extent we've seen here. And so what I'd like you to do is comment about the differences you see between what's important to international students when they're choosing a program and what's important to domestic students when they're choosing a program. And you can see they're different from each other. That's the case, then it means if we're developing marketing materials, we should have different marketing materials for domestic and international because they're different issues they want us to look at. So um, of the domestic students, uh, the Nova Scotia ones, most of them are actually from Halifax. And you can, if you drill into the variable living, you'll find that most students that are 
domestic are living uh, with their parents. So that means they live, their parents live in some commuting distance from the same area. So they probably live in the Halifax area. Um, and it may be that, why are they doing that? It's students stay close to home in many instances because they can't afford to go away. They can't afford other living costs. Um, so let's look at cost as being an important thing maybe to all students. And so I'm going to start with a new pivot table and I'm going to look at expected cost in the rows and working in the columns and I'm going to summarize with count once again. Okay. So let's create a new table for question three. So in, oh, sorry, I'm clicking on the wrong thing. Insert pivot table. Okay. And I'll make it a little bigger. So what have I got here? I'm going to be counting again with ID. I'm going to be looking at uh, important reason. And I'm going to, oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to be looking at expected cost. And what was the other thing? It was working. Working. There it is. We're again working. And of course, we don't want sum. We want to summarize with count, as we've done before. And then what else does it tell us to do? Probably, do we want percentage of something? Uh, count. I'm going to hide the not applicable uh, and blank rows and columns. I'm going to rearrange so the rows are sequenced from less to more. I'm going to group together all those that are working, and I'm going to look at percentage of row total and hide the decimals. That's a lot of things. OK. So over here, I want to get rid of the not applicable. Hide it. Okay. I'd like to go from less to be about what I expected and then more. So less has got to move. So click on less. It looks like a cross. Right click. Say you want to move it, move it to the beginning. There. So it's going in increasing order. Okay, I've got, I'm not working, not looking for work. I'm not working, but looking for work. Okay. There we are. I'm working on and off campus. I'm working off campus. I'm working on campus. I'm going to take all of those, group them. Okay. I'm going to collapse the group and this one is now called working. Now look at my other groups here. Why do I have other groups? And it's because it creates groups for everybody. So let's collapse all of these things. It's just repetitious. Okay, so now I've got three categories. I don't want any blanks. Let me hide the blanks. Notice my labels now. It's just the three. Okay. My new sort of variable. If you want to shrink this down a little further, what you could do is go over here to home and wrap your text. Okay. And then if I go and squeeze it, oh, didn't do it. Hold on a second. There we go. So if I squeeze this to make it squunched up a bit, and I can wrap the text here. There we go. So this makes an easier table to read. And then give myself some, oops, wrong way. I'm going to add in a pivot chart. There we go. Put over here, make my screen a little bigger. Now it asks me a percentage of something. What do I want? Percentage of row or column total? It says percentage of row total. Okay. So what does that do for us? So click on any cell, right click, show values as percentage of row total. 
let's get rid of the decimals. Just clutter. Right click, number format. Get rid of your decimals. There we go. So what's this doing? Hmm. Well, I think I'm going to ask you to explain some of that. Um, top left corner is 26%. Is that what I get? Whoops, wrong thing here. Yeah, 26%. 26% of what? I want you to explain to me what that is. 26% of what are doing what? That. Because you should be able to explain any number that's in a table. I'm going to let you to figure that one out. So, back to this. If costs are more than you expected, are you more likely to be working or not working? If costs were a lot less than you expected, are you more likely to be working or not working? Like if you found, hey, I'm running short of money, what do you do? I would expect you'd go out and find a job, find or you'd find a way to spend less. So if your costs are rising, you either find more income or you reduce your expenses. Is that happening here or is everybody just working? Because <laughs> it looks like a lot of students are working. Um, it's just your opinion. There's not a clear answer on this one. So um, let's look more closely at the issue of working while at school. And that I want to look, I'm going to create a histogram. Okay, So I'm going to create a new pivot chart. So this, oops, what happened here? I'm going to rename this one question three, and I'm going to go and insert a new pivot table. Oh, so I keep clicking on the wrong thing. I want to go and insert pivot table. Make it bigger. And it says, go and drag hours work. Where is that? Um, there it is, hours work, drag it to rows, okay? These are all the different answers people told us about how many hours a week they work, okay? I want ID to values, I'm gonna change it to count. Let's change this to count. Whoops, wrong thing, summarize by count. I want to show it as percentage of column total. And I want to get rid of all these decimals. So this is something you should be getting into the habit of doing now. We've done it quite a few times. And make a chart. And this is a very silly looking chart. It's just a bunch of little spikes and a huge spike at the end for the blanks, people that didn't tell us what they were doing or how many hours they were working. Probably they weren't working, okay? Take a picture of that and paste it in. Now I want you to group the data. This gets tricky, okay? Um, that, so how do we do grouping? You go over here, and this is different from the grouping we've done before. Instead of going and creating a group, selecting a whole bunch of values and then hitting group, I'm just going to pick one. I'm going to hit group. And Excel says, start at zero, go to 80, and go in increments of 10. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. And actually, I don't even want to include zero because zero. Uh, that would suggest they're not working. And that could well be people that said, I'm not working and not looking for work or something like that. And when asked how many hours a week do they work, <laughs> zero, because I'm not working. That So we got to fool Excel that 
you could put in one if you want it, but it gets messy. I'm going to put in 0 0.01 or something like that. I don't want to go up to 80. That's a crazy number. Let's stop it, say it's 60. And increments of 10 are too big. Let me try five. And it takes a minute here. It'll group everything. And it's going to create a, a simpler column chart. What was I supposed to do? Oh, I did it right, actually. This is what was asked for. Well, it said 0 0.001, same idea. So I've got a whole bunch of zeros and blanks that I really don't want. And I don't want that one over 60. I think it's a crazy number. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to get rid of this group that is zero or blank. I'm going to get rid of crazies that are over here. And that should give me a simpler chart. OK. And I think I want to take a picture of that. So we haven't done that in a while. Let's take a picture. That's what we're supposed to be doing with each question is snip a picture. And then I can paste it in here. OK. So describe that shape. What does it look like to you? And now we were working with domestic and international before. What happens if we go and drag? Is it still there? Uh, home is home too. That was my compressed home variable. Try dragging it to columns, see if it's still there. Hmm. It forgot the names I gave it. So who was group one, who was group two? I think this was domestic. And this was international. Depends upon which you group first, which group second. Okay. And so now I've got two histograms, a blue one and an orange one. Take a picture of that, paste it in, and that international students said cost was really important. And so you might think they might be working to address that issue of cost because it's serious to them. Um, does that look like what's happening here? OK. Um, comment on that picture and the difference between domestic and international. So we've done a histogram. Let's do a box and whisker chart. And we'll use the same data to do a box and whisker. And we're going to be um, looking at home. I can't group home the box and whisker, but we're going to do that. So to do this, I got to go back to the data. Okay, I'm going to look at hours work. Uh, where is it? Hours work. So grab that column. I'm going to insert a chart. You can go to recommended charts, or you could go to this one and pick one from its list. But I'll go to recommended. I'm going to go to all charts. And I've got box and whisker. OK, here's a box and whisker chart of hours work. And here you see those outliers, the ones that gave us really crazy hours of work, 70, 75, 80 hours. I want you to now look at where people are from. So to do that, I'm in the design tab of my chart. because I've got my chart highlighted here. Go to select data. Go over here to edit. This is the horizontal category. And it wants the range for that. So we'll go and find home. Don't worry that I can't see my picture anymore. Go down to the bottom here. Oh, I got to go to the very bottom. It stopped here, but it goes further. Um, go down to row 1146. There it is. OK. Click OK. See, we made the labels. 
And my chart's gone. Where'd my chart go? My chart was up at the top of the screen. I should be able to find it. And it was over to the right. Remember? It was over where hours work is. There it is. I'd like to be able to group these, resequence them. I can resequence. It's a little bit of work, uh, but that's too much for right now. Uh, I'm just going to stop there. Okay. So there's another type of chart. We've done that. Let's now do a scatter chart. And we're going to look at working and grades. OK, go back here. So I want hours work and grades. OK, now if you do this, let's take GPA. And you go over here. And I know lots of people are going to get this messed up. Click that one. I want to go and insert. I'm going to get a chart. I want a scatter chart. Ah, it looks like a scatter chart. OK. What do you want on the horizontal axis? What do you want on the vertical? I'd like hours work. And how does that impact GPA? This has GPA on the horizontal and hours work on the vertical. And don't try saying switch row and column. You'll get an error. Ah, what's going on? Remember with doing a scatter chart, whatever variable is on the left becomes a horizontal axis. The one that was on the right becomes the vertical. So you might as well just get rid of this chart. It's all wrong. And in fact, I am going to have to move columns. So I'm going to copy these two columns. I'm going to put them in a new sheet. OK. Um, this looks blank. It's just the text is actually hidden from you. It's white. <laughs> anyway, so, but this is the wrong way still. So take this column, okay, and move it over here. Okay, so now I've got work on the left, GPA in the right. I grab the two, go to insert, chart. There I go. There it is. Here's my scatter chart. Okay. And I think I ask you to okay, make sure the um, I label the horizontal and vertical axes of the chart and give the chart an informative title. So part of the reason I'm asking you to make sure you label the axes is because the question asks for hours work on the horizontal. So I want to add a chart element. So axis on the horizontal. This is hours work per week. Or you can just give it the variable name. And I'm going to do the vertical. I'm going to type in GPA. Now. Honestly, I don't like that. It's just my preference. Um, oops. Click on this again. Right click, format, axis, title. I'm going to go over here to the far right. And I want to make it horizontal. You don't have to do this. It wasn't required. But I suggest if you can, most people like reading left to right and give this a description <laughs> you're going to put in something here for a title to this chart i've said what do you see but uh, describe the pattern that you see in this chart if you work more hours does that affect your grade point average if you work less hours does that affect your grade point average what do you think? That do you think working has an impact on grades? And if you think it should, but the chart doesn't show it, do you have any idea of why? There is an explanation. That um, since I've got all this data here, I've also got 
others, like how else do you spend your time? That you have studying and having fun. So I can jump right to part C. Okay, let me move my picture aside here. What I could do is go back here to my data and I've got two other variables about time. You spend your time studying and having fun and working. Okay, also going to class. So I'm going to, um, I insert these guys, paste special. I think that would do it. Uh, what's it doing to me? Is that gonna work? No, sorry, I goofed. I wrote on top of the stuff I had before. So fine, I'll, oh, get you out of the way. Let me paste it here then. And I know you can't see what the titles are. You may have to retype them. Okay. And what I want you to do is go and find correlation. To do that, you need to find data. You need to go to data analysis. I want correlation. Okay. Where is my data? My data goes, it's here from B1. It's going to go all the way over to E in this picture, down to the bottom row, which is 1146. It's all my data is in columns. I do have labels in the first row. Um, I can put it into a new sheet or I can put it here if I want. Oops. There's something wrong with what's written here. Um, sorry, it says B. Excuse me. It's got to be E. Oh, no. There's something wrong here. See if that works. Now, output range, it's not letting me type in here. There we go. And I'm going to just put it down here in G something or other. And it should give you a little table. It's the correlation among those variables. And you're asked to go and comment on that stuff. I'd like you to copy that into your assignment. And that I'd like to know whether or not that table tells you whether or not working takes time away from studying or recreation. Okay. So the more hours you work, the less time you have to study or less time you have to have fun. Is that true? Uh, or is there evidence that studying more gives you better grades? Can you see that out of the table? Should be able to. So I'd like you to pull a couple of pieces out of that table, and that'll tell me whether or not you understand correlation. And if you've done all that, you've completed the assignment. So it doesn't, you know, it shouldn't take you too long to get this done as long as Excel cooperates. That, uh, so I think we are going to end here, and I'm going to stop recording. Bye now. Hope this helps.